Good morning and welcome to the trade setup right here on BQ Prime. I'm Nida Chavit Tamannai Namdar and it seems that the world markets are welcoming Diwali because the queues, if anything, if you wanted positive queues, today's a day when you got a perfect concoction of positive news. Global markets, yields, crude, everything set for a decent start to the day. As a very interesting note, which we'll talk about later on in the show says, the stars have aligned. They're talking, of course, about a company, but yes, it seems like that when you look at the perfect conditions as well, and maybe the Diwali mood has begun. So here's what's happening. Crude. Crude is definitely the big story or the big headline of the day as far as this morning's trade is concerned. If it's cooled off below the $80 mark. Even now, Brent is hanging on below the $80 mark. Uh, and uh, it's the lowest in three months. So a couple of factors contributing to that. One is uh, an increasing thought that uh, Chinese demand is going to slow down. Uh, U.S. stocks are also high. And that is combining to see cool off in crude prices. Always good news for India. Bonds, meanwhile, um, also remain benign. They're waiting for more indications. There was a small speech by Jerome Powell uh, yesterday, but nothing really on economy or finance. But more Fed um, speakers are expected to give their comments. So that would be may maybe one indication that they would look for, but nothing to upset the apple cart um, as of now. Meanwhile, U.S. equities also in the green, they've lost steam from, uh, you know, the great run-up we saw all of last week, but definitely the positive uptrend continues. Look at this. The S&P and NASDAQ have enjoyed their longest winning streak in two years, and uh, the Dow, though uh, closed down, has been on a winning streak for seven, eight, nine sessions straight. So that's definitely an upside over there. Just one big number which came out, which everyone was talking about, was Disney uh, in um, Wall Street Post market hours. Better than expected numbers. Their cost cutting is on track. And uh, yes, it does seem they're going to offload some of their TV business. That's always leading to a lot of speculation here domestically about which player or who will buy Disney's uh, TV business. So uh, you have pretty good news coming globally. What's happening about here in the trade setup, Neeraj? So, you know, I mean, simply, you, you laid it out. Lower yield, lower crude prices, all of that further helped the sentiment on Indian equities. We didn't have particularly a bad day. You won't be deceived by looking at the headline numbers, but the broader end of the spectrum, the mid caps and the small caps, actually had a fairly decent run mm. in trade yesterday as well. I, I believe three quarters of a percent and about a, about a full percent for the small caps. So that end of the spectrum is looking okay. Um, I never like saying that we told you so, but real estate, we mentioned yesterday, you yeah. know, that uh, it, everybody's saying that and, you know, back with a bang, if you will. Again, it, it might turn okay, it might turn out to be a case of Sargaves because you never know what happens to an index on any given day. So we're not in the business of predicting. But the trend seemed looking very, very strong. Yesterday, comments from Irfan Razak, uh, the results that have come in from a few other players as well. E even today, there's a real estate uh, player, Brigade Enterprises, very strong performance. So, uh, just the listed space, the organized space seems to be doing well. So real estate as an index back on track. The interesting thing, though, is pharmaceuticals. Extremely strong showing in terms of sentiment for the space that has gotten bombed out for the last maybe six or eight quarters. Mm -hmm. It's come back really well. Yesterday, for example, if you look at the top gainers list, while, yes, there is an HPCL and we have a note out there which we'll talk about or an Apollo tires which reacted to results. Again, amplifying that point that, you know, post-result stocks are moving. Look at Alchem Labs, Zydus Life, Ipka Labs, some very strong showing by some of the uh, pharmaceutical names, which, and post Lupin's numbers today, mm -hmm. which might actually look really good. So, uh, and, and Lupin's performance. So, pharmaceuticals, real estate, select pockets continue to do well, but on a day when the market at large is doing well, you expect some very strong result reactions as well. Absolutely. And big numbers coming in. You know, interesting that pharma is back in vogue, always known as a defensive play. But uh, right now... Valuations in favor. Yeah, valuations in favor. Uh, let's just talk about some of the results today. And of course, there's always a huge, huge list, but we narrow it down yeah. to a few that uh, might be interesting. Adani Ports uh, and SEZ, uh, one of them. Uh, there was a big announcement out of Sri Lanka yesterday. You're talking about pharma. Aurobindo Pharma, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Suvain Pharma, AstraZeneca, all have numbers coming out today. So maybe that flavor continues. Um, Ashok Leland, uh, another a big one, which everyone will be tracking. Page Industries, GIC, Torrent Power, 
रेल विकास निगम एस जे वी एन जी एंटरटेनमेंट ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ न्यूज फ्लो प्रोमोटर एंड मैनेजमेंट न्यूज फ्लो दैट केम आउट रिसेंटली रिप्री फॉर पुनीत गोयंका दैट हेज ऑलरेडी बिन प्राइस इन बट विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी दैर आई हेड ऑफ द मर्जर विद सोनी वॉट्स हैपनिंग इन दैट बिजनेस फिनोलेक्स केबल्स ग्राफाइट इंडिया ग्रैन्यूल्स इंडिया uh these are just some of the few that we've picked for you which could be interesting but let's tell you that if it's important if it's big it's definitely going to be covered on BQ Prime so don't worry about that before i had it back to you for the stocks to watch i just wanted to make a point on what's happening with foreign flows and uh, the data comes out regularly but even when we're talking about all of this excitement in the indian markets foreign investors have remained net sellers 11th day in a row they've offloaded about 84 crores dii's are mopping up 500 25 crores so that trend continues its domestic investors largely through mutual funds which are giving that growth engine to the indian markets right now yeah but it's good to see though that the number is just a trickle of 84 crores versus yeah. the 1500 crores that we were used to so that's interesting okay some stocks to watch um, uh, to uh, in the session today and a couple of stocks in news but largely dominated by results again and i'll start off with pharma two names which are top contenders for the stock of the day if you will actually three the third one i haven't given the graphics for but lupin right revenues 21% higher much better than estimates or actually uh, maybe about 4 or 5% higher than estimates so that is okay in line but look at their bit top performance there 917 crores versus estimated 7 788 crores that's about a 12 13% beat if i'm not wrong slightly more than that strong ebitda beat strong margin performance and as a result of which on that base um are 277% which is 3 and a half x jump in profit after tax much better than estimated again at 393 you i don't think you could find a fault with lupin keep in mind this is a business which has not gotten a single if i'm not wrong no recent us fda action on lupin i mean it's all the actions that have been taken on a bunch of other companies us fda observations etc lupin has come out smelling like roses so very strong US FDA track record very strong performance in the quarter uh, i wouldn't be surprised if lupin has a field day today concord biotech is the other one recent ipo always cribbing about the valuations now the company saying hey look at my pat numbers and then cry about the valuations <laughs> 65% uptick in revenues margins up to i mean from 24% to 45% pat up 81 crores versus 22 crores it's still not a cheap stock but all i'm saying is it's delivering on its numbers these are a healthy set of numbers by any stretch of imagination what i haven't spoken about i will talk about it in detail because of an investec note but U- united spirits the premiumization play seems to be really strong the value growth of 12.8% interim dividend of 4 per share uh, very strong showing by united spirits so that's the third one and uh, two more large names you know some of the numbers were so many that we've had to constrict them but the larger ones you have to give a proper description pi industries in a quarter when most agrochem companies and agri related companies have struggled look at the pi numbers 19% uptick in pat uh, in revenues at 2117 which is in line with estimates but the margin beat 26% versus estimated 24 half as a result of which of 43% uptick in pat 480 crores versus estimates of 419 crores so strong showing there strong showing by tata power um maybe a bit lower than the beat that jsw energy put out mm. but still and that's usually the case but the 709 basis points expansion in margins is something that should please the street so that's the other one which has done really well for itself so i think tata power we're speaking to today as well you will hear from some of these companies and we'll get a, a more refined sense of what really is going on Yeah, yeah, most certainly. So, Tata Power Q2 conversation with Sajid a bit later on. Some other numbers very quickly that I need to mark before we wrap up. So, a strong quarter two for Wellspun Corp. Revenues have doubled, and a bit tight 399 crores versus 131. Med Plus Health operating margins at 6% versus estimated 3.7%. As a result of which, the PAT was up 2x. Ashoka Built Corn revenues were up 19%, but 158 basis points margin expansion in that business. where in margins don't usually expand so much as a result of which the pat was up 81% and remember ashoka biltcon has a very strong book to bill ratio as well masgon dock pat up 55% operating profit margins up to 79 then patanjali foods i don't quite know how the street will read it because revenues were down about 8% but margins expanded 5% versus 2.28% as a result of which pat up over 2x 254 versus 112 now the howlers skf india uh, expensive stock Uh, revenues well, okay you know 1125 you probably missed it but the margin blip 910 basis points down taken margins 
10.79 versus 19.89. The estimates were 18%. As a result of which, the PAT was 90 crores versus 163. I would reckon this one take a knock on the on the chin. Gujarat Alkali's revenues down 13%. Again, margins down 5, 1,500 basis points. 4.63 versus 20%. As a result of which, a net loss versus a profit. BHEL, order inflow slowed down. Performance very weak. Net loss at 238 crores. You know, this is... This is turning out to be a, an Ajit Agarkar kind of a story in cricket. The memes are that he always held promise, never quite delivered. BHL is coming like that. Though he's been a fabulous uh, uh, selector, if you will. And to my mind, one of the best bowlers around when he's at his peak. But somehow BHL is not quite delivered. So the memes are on that phrase. That's what I'm saying. Uh, weak pack performance from Best, best Agro Life, Lumax and Bata. As well as weak Q2 from HEG, Balaji Mines, Sanofi, GNFC. All of these uh, saw some downticks as well. So not the greatest numbers. Last piece, Pidelite has said it's intends to set up a lending business. So that is interesting. And um, uh, Genus Power yet again wins orders worth 2,200 crores. You know, I hope we get an opportunity to understand better why Pidelite wants to get into the lending yeah, business. But, uh, there is maybe a, some rationale here. APL Apollo set up SG FinServe. Uh, yeah. That business is doing really well. And it helps the company, parent company in the working capital cycle as well because com the suppliers will deliver on time. Uh, but I will make sure that I ask Bharat Puri this question. You you must. And, you know, also look at how the concern about uh, micro loans uh, uh, is growing. And uh, on the one end, that credit appetite is growing. And on the other end, of course, more and more want to come into the financial space. So that's interesting. We were talking about a couple of notes that we just wanted to mention. And one of them was uh, Morgan Stanley has given a double thumbs up in a sense, to HPCL. So it's a double upgrade to uh, overweight. They've said uh, earnings quality, balance sheet transformation, and policy reforms. They describe it as the stars aligning. Uh, they say they will see dependence on external oil products. The company will see dependence on external oil products fall by half to um, financial year 2025 and zero to uh, financial year 2026. Investec is the other one, which uh, was a very interesting note, Neeraj. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for them and, and, and that note effectively uh, says that what United Spirits did in its delivery, it looked yeah. very, very solid, Tamanna, to so, me. So, so they say that they maintain, they've maintained a buy with a price target of uh, 1,145. They said revenue has uh, beaten estimates led by 13% growth in PNA segment. EBITDA margins uh, expanded sharply by 400 basis points driven by lower employee costs offset by advertising spends and a one-off income of 30-odd crores on last tranche of income recognized on sale of popular brands. But yeah, they're getting the tequilas and the other things out here in the Indian market. Premiumization yeah. is on its way, Tamanna. Absolutely. Cheers to that as we wrap up the trade setup today. But of course, uh, a lot more for you all day on BQ Prime.